What's going on everybody? Thanks for tuning in to Rose Performance again today. Today we are going to be going ahead and going over the all-wheel drive build. This is part two of the build series. We're actually going to be going ahead and doing a little bit of work on the rear cantilever suspension setup, um, giving you a little outlook of the trunk layout. We have the AYC pump for the all-wheel drive. <clears throat> for you guys that don't know, thank you for tuning in. Um, my name is Dwayne with Rose Performance. Um, I am actually in the process of making the world's first all-wheel drive protege um, using an Evo X. So this car should be very, very fast. Um, I actually am very stoked about the project. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Go ahead and give us a like, subscribe, and go ahead and click that notification bell because uh, I'm going to be doing daily uploads. So you guys go ahead and tune in. And uh, we're gonna get this all set up, man. So pretty much what we got going on today is we're gonna be doing a little bit of work on the trunk cage. Um, if you guys don't know, that's a anti-yaw or automatic, automatic yaw control sensor, which is basically like a G sensor that actually controls the power output from the rear differential to the front differential. Um, we have a fuel cell and we also have a radiator uh, and then there's also air motive a1000 fuel pump um, and this is a little bit preview of the trunk cage right here so you guys can kind of see how it looks and pretty much we're gonna go ahead and get started on this thing today enjoy okay so that's pretty much the setup that we got um, got a bunch of fitting uh, got a bunch of other stuff that we got to do this car we're gonna make a really really big diffuser on the car there goes a little bit of a sneak peek. So pretty much what I'm trying to do right here is I'm getting the cantilever suspension set up uh, all dialed in for the rear. Um, I actually ended up notching out the subframe. I'm actually going to end up going back to the box and it all in. But that's why I said I made the subframe able to be taken back down. So if you can see, it actually has the full four-wheel drive setup the whole differential the drive line it's all there everything goes up straight to the to the front so that's all really good that's all very healthy so very excited very happy about that um, like I said I couldn't wish anything better so pretty much next step is we're gonna probably end up trying to make um, a few things we need to make the lower mounts for the rear coilovers and the reason for that is because right now i have this cool idea about in the protege you have these stock holes that would actually hold the seat belts right here and if you see i tried to utilize all the stock mounting locations for as far as making all my stuff now you can get on me in the comments if you want to about my welds I'm not by no means am I a professional welder and I am a junior fabricator in the making. I'm trying to learn. I've taught myself everything for myself and there was nobody here to help me. So um, I actually applaud myself on how far I've come. Um, I actually have everything from like I said full adjustable links to be able to adjust the rear suspension to all the way down to I'm making custom shifters and stuff like that. This. I, I graduated with a business technology degree. I never in a hundred years imagined that I'd be building race cars. To be honest, it was just kind of one of those things of when I tried it, it was like, wow, man. I feel, I'll tell you what, nothing is more powerful than fusing two pieces of metal together with electricity as a man or a woman, but it creates a, like, a fire inside of you that wants to do something that like you know all those crazy imagination things that you imagine for hours and think that oh man I could do this and do that try it do it you'll be surprised what you can actually turn yourself out and turn into and do what you want to do if you just put like two cents of effort into it I promise just try it it doesn't look the best in the world. I'm not trying to win no award for like the best looking whatever, whatever, whatever. But it functions. That's the biggest part. So as you can see, I have multiple adjustable points to adjust the cantilever suspension setup. 
and I also have multiple adjustable points to make the pivot of basically what's going on adjustable. And I came up with the design. I started out with a piece of paper and I drew in this design and I was like, man, that'd be pretty cool to go ahead and just transfer it over. So what I did is I went ahead and transferred it over to like a longer design because I knew I needed a little bit more throw. Now, I could possibly get a little bit more pinion angle if I move these in a little bit closer to where the cantilever would actually pivot more. There's a reason why I did not do that and I actually came out with the idea of making these a little bit shorter is because most of my suspension travel is already subsided by the Bilstein uh, I did the Bilstein adjustable shocks on there so it already has Bilstein shocks and those Bilsteins actually go ahead and take up what would be any lateral movement and absorb any front lateral movement so that way the coilovers are not going to be taking a lot of stress they'll actually be taking up the rest of the absorbent stress now I need you guys to help me come up with an idea on how I should mount these coilovers i keep coming up with this cool idea i want to cross them that's what i really really want to do like that's the ultimate goal is to cross them if i cannot cross them what i will end up doing is end up making a double setup where they will both sit kind of like in a v shape like this and like that and basically they will absorb the energy from right there in the middle. Now the great thing about having coilovers is I can adjust this sleeve up to as high as I want it and it'll still be fully adjustable and I can make everything happen from that. Now, the other idea I came up with also is instead of using a set of rear coilovers, I took another set of front coilovers and I accidentally put them in the rear and the the fronts are considerably a lot shorter now the reason why i would use a lot shorter of a coilover in this instance is because the shorter coilover would allow me to mount it to where as if it would be from here to right there so then i can literally make a full out cantilever setup to where if this pushes up you have a solid point there and this is going to push down so it'll be straight up boom 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 now this is a little loose right now i can go ahead and tighten up the bolts but it's all for mock-up so i don't know if i want to do that or not yet but that's looking like that's going to end up being the plan because i think that that would look really cool because i would still have two coilovers mounted right here and right here and i would still be able to how do you say it i would still be able to basically make it so that way the coilovers are adjustable no, it doesn't cross over each other in X, and the half X that I got kind of going on right here is just a tack welded 45 degree piece that goes across. And if anybody has ever tried to done, do these notches before, these are some significantly hard notches to do. Um, coping it not only at a sharp, sharp angle, but making both sides meet each corner almost perfectly. And this is actually Dom wall tubing. Um, this is the one inch variety. Um, and it is very expensive for a whole stick. Um, and this is actually an uh, inch and a half dom wall tubing and 120 wall. Um, I prefer the 120 wall because the mild steel tubing is what they use in NASCAR. And I know that I've never seen a NASCAR get shredded apart before. So I'm actually going to make a lot of people say use chromoly, but I like dom. Um, and it actually cleans up very well and it doesn't like you don't get that nasty like dark black where you have to like treat every single piece and like i said i'm no professional welder by no means but this is kind of what i came up with and it does work that's the cool part so i'll go ahead and spin the tire and if i spin the tire the drive shaft works as you can see so that's pretty cool and I think that next is going to be us making some mounts for the drive shaft. So that way the all wheel drive setup will be solidified and it will be done. So let's go in there pretty and nice and it'll actually be really cool. So the whole company, like the whole, I, I guess the whole the point behind Rose Performance is that I wanted to make proteges fast. 
and these cars already have a lot of potential. From the factory, they're an iron block aluminum head. It's a dual overhead cam design, and with the stuff that I fabricate and the stuff that I make, um, doing partnerships with certain companies, I've actually been able to come up with a platform and an engine that I would call my outlaw engine, and it's a Rose Performance Stage 3 slash Stage 4 setup that I am building for right around 1,300 wheel horsepower for this car. Um, that'll include a lot of custom uh, items that I've actually came up with as far as R&D and production on my own. Um, it'll include a full roll cage inside the vehicle so that way I'm safe um, because safety is a big big important agenda as far as what I you know consider safe um, the car is one of a kind um, it's actually the first one in the world ever to be done and the fact that I actually I did this and I surprised a lot of people and I told everybody hey I'm going to be doing this and, you know, I got a lot of kickback for it for a long time. So I'm actually thankful that I'm to that point now to where I'm actually starting to reap the benefits from what I put in for as far as my hard work goes. Um, what we're going to be doing also is I mentioned earlier about the electronic power steering. So the electronic power steering, this is the electronic power steering unit. This right here is actually from a 2017 Nissan Altima. Now, the great thing about running a Haltech, I know this looks like a big old wiring mess right now, but to me it makes perfect sense. So, what we got going on is the original Evo power steering lines, they actually come through the firewall. So what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna make adapters that'll end up fitting these to go from there all the way to the back or I might end up taking the lines actually off the actual rack and pinion and making custom lines that'll follow all the way down the side and then it'll actually go to back here because I'm actually gonna mount a bunch of stuff is all gonna be right here. What I'm trying to do is get the car to an equal 50-50 weight distribution and not so much weight in the middle. What I feel that'll do is if the weight is above the the axles and above the actual subframes it'll actually help the car keep the grip on the road on what we're trying to do so there goes a little bit of just like a sneak peek of kind of type type what we're doing but essentially this thing is going to be very fast um, I also have a Moroso oil accumulator so it will be running a Moroso oil accumulator uh, it does have a the first the world's first protege dry sump setup actually I've never heard of anybody else running a dry sump setup on the protege and when I say their protege I mean specifically the BJ2 chassis so little reiteration of the trunk setup what we got is uh had my buddy come over and he gave me this cool idea about I wanted to cut the trunk up because with the radiator being in the oh shit sorry we actually closed something in the trunk something's in there oh yeah okay got it so with the radiator being in the trunk I wanted to make a cool setup that I felt would be sufficient enough look at that freaking oh my gosh uh, would be sufficient enough to where I could actually push air through the car and not have to worry about the radiator heat soaking and everything else in the trunk getting super hot so what I came up with is I cut out the front of the trunk and on the inside of here is all gonna get mesh I'm actually gonna like tack weld it all to the inside so that way it'll all be perfect then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another bracket system that'll hold three small fans that'll go right here and what that'll do is it'll suck the air out then I'm also going to take more mesh and I'm going to put some mesh onto the top and then the mesh on the top will actually like you know help diffuse the heat because heat rises and you want that heat to get out of there um on the inside of the car I am running let's see for a setup I am running a just a normal Jegs fucking 15 gallon fuel cell and I made a exo cage that actually floats into the trunk so 
took some square tubing and basically modified the square tubing to where it would be in here. And like I said, I'm not the best welder in the world. I still have a couple welds that I need to go back over. But right now, this is great and this is good enough for what I need to do. Um, you can kind of see how I mounted the rear subframe and it actually ties back into the top tie bar. I'm actually going to end up creating another kicker that will go from right here down to this point right there. And then that will make it really, really strong. Um, and like I said, everything in the car is able to be unbolted and drop down. So the whole subframe on the front and the rear can both come down still. That's the whole thing I wanted to make sure that we we did is made sure that it could come back down. Now the radiator is mounted in the trunk. Um, we are using a cork port radiator for the time being because the radiator on this cork port is very thick. This thing is massive thick. So. We're going to be using that, and then we're going to probably put two fans. As you can see, I got one fan kind of mounted, so we're going to kind of put a fan there. And then we're also going to put a fan on the other side. And these will be pull fans because it will already have air going over it. So what we're going to try to do is eliminate the heat, and we're going to try to pull that heat and extract that heat out of the trunk by pulling. by. And, and there's also this misconception that I could use a push fan and get the same results, but I feel like if I'm doing a pull because the car is already going forward, I feel like I'm going to get a better result with that. Now, a lot of people don't know what this is. This is a Mitsubishi uh, 2012 AYC pump. So it's a it's a auto, uh, automatic yaw control system is what the... Uh, Mitsubishi Evo uses to basically control the four-wheel drive setup and it basically runs two transmission lines that run down to the rear diff. Now what we're going to do is we're going to end up relocating this system to in the front of the car. Now I might make a bracket and then go ahead and mount it because it actually looks quite like it looks like it should be right there to be honest with you and then I can make another mount there's supposed to be a little container that sits at the top right here and it has two little two little uh, cups and basically what that does is it connects and makes it so that way you can mount the container yeah, so mission one we gotta go ahead and get this transmission all jacked up and then from there we're gonna go ahead and try to get these holes lined up as close as we can now I know for a fact that I had to take the shifter cables off oh the steering linkage does work guys let me show you give me one second you can see that So, looks like lining up the subframe is going to take a little bit longer than I expected. So, that's going to be it for today's video. Um, go ahead and hit the like button. Subscribe. Please subscribe. I got a lot of views, but 
Got to get the subscribers up, man. You guys are going to want to stay tuned for this build and definitely turn on that notification bell because I'm, I'm planning on doing daily content on this car. So you guys will get to see a day-to-day -day process on how an all-wheel drive protege is actually built. Um, as you can see, everything kind of already, it works really, really good. And I'm so stoked about everything, how it's already turning out. Um, I